She says, Mark, this is my therapy. Don't you dare touch this. She's really good at it. Now, nobody's going to pay her to be CFO to do that, right? But it's it's kind of like the old expression, even a bodybuilder wants a cheeseburger every now and then. Mm -hmm. You know, like this is this is a break for her and then back at it, the, the stuff where she's really doing some value add. Well, I'd have been against it, but they're back. Mark and Mike, it doesn't take a genius. Ramsey! Marshall, I'd like to acknowledge you and uh, our listeners, both of them. Uh, in fact, I actually know their names. What? Yeah, yeah, and we they... had a... Uh, we had an email i thought they were just fictitious characters that lived in our heads well so did i i you know uh the 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 feedback we get comes from uh many people and um uh our listeners are picking up on a regular basis uh, some from canada and uk now i don't know how that happened but um but i did get an email and it says i am one of your two listeners this is from dow shout out to dow thank you dow uh, I'm one of your two listeners. My best friend Dale is the other one when he gets to it. So there they are. It's it's Dow and Dale. So this episode's dedicated to them. I'm so <laughs> thankful. Um, but they they did have a follow up. Uh, Dow had a follow up to uh, our episode about uh, never assume people want to win as much as you. Uh, so you remember this episode? I, I guess you, you want to quickly go through the scenario of what uh what happened in your uh car dealership that you were working with yeah yeah uh, by the time this comes out that would have been a little over a month ago episode 212 uh nice. the keeping score so the, the 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 scenario was you had uh you had a sales team sales management team and they uh the their manager thought they could be performing at a higher level and they were spending these managers were spending more time on administrative tasks versus performance coaching and helping their people to to succeed and grow sales so the manager of the managers went out and hired some people to do some of the administrative work taking work off of the plate of the manager so that the managers could have you know more time uh, to spend with their people uh, coaching, training, uh, and getting involved with customers. Doing manager stuff. Yeah, doing manager leadership stuff, yeah. uh, manager coaching stuff versus manager admin stuff. Yep. And so the managers gladly gave their admin tasks to the newly hired staff and promptly proceeded to do nothing with their additional time uh, as it related to leading coaching and things like that. So yeah, the, the 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 general manager figured out that the only thing that he improved was his personnel expense, <laughs> and that was not really what he was shooting for. And by improve, you mean increase? <laughs> yeah, yeah, made higher, uh, yeah, more, much, you know, bigger. So so the the opportunity was there, uh, and. And it was only when he went to the managers and said, hey, I'm going to, you know, we're going to have to change some people out and we're going to have to do something uh, that the managers began doing the behaviors, right? Working with their people, working with customers and sales went up. Uh, by that point, it was too late. The manager had already decided to make the changes. And so because he, he felt like this was a temporary thing, they were going to go back to a, a level uh, a previous level of performance that that wasn't sustainable for the organization's long-term success. Aha. Aha. Okay. So that is, uh, that's, that's an intriguing uh, point there that you just made because Dow was wondering about the admin and uh, you know, we were talking about, we weren't sure, you know, why the managers wouldn't continue to do the thing that increased sales, you know, the, 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 the coaching and, and leadership stuff that that really would help and um I, I think you just said the opposite of of dow's uh, point here but i think it's still worth talking about he he says is it possible the problem is not with coaching but with delegating to administrative help and and i think what you just said is they were happy to delegate uh <laughs> but uh you know they uh they just didn't do the the coaching but let me let me read dow's point here because i think he he makes a good point about how delegating really needs to work. He says, for years as a leader, I felt hamstrung because no one would want to do the jobs I hated. Once I started truly studying and understanding leadership, I realized that's not true. 
I wasn't being kind by holding on to quote unquote enabler jobs because I couldn't believe anyone wanted those. I was being arrogant thinking everyone would be like me. Also, why would I ask you to do a five minute job? I'll just do it. And uh, he goes on to say, you know, he recognized that there are people who got energy out of repetitive tasks. There were people who were gifted in this way. He despised the work other people uh, didn't. Now, he also despised having to train somebody up to do the repetitive work. You know, that that was not fun either, uh, taking that time to, to teach them. But he said, once I started doing it, it saved pr the time in the long run, uh, saved the process. And he was able to be with more people as a leader, you know, do, do the, the management leadership things uh, because he was finally in the headspace to say, wait a minute, they want to do this. And if I take the time to train them up, man, it really is truly off my plate and I can go do the stuff that, that I can specialize in. So that was Dow's point. I think it's probably still worth talking about it. I guess in your scenario, uh, they still would not have <laughs> embraced Right. Coaching leadership. Well, I'm I'm completely aligned with the Taoist philosophy. So, <laughs> so I think his his point is right. When we ask managers, typically, we ask managers, "What's your biggest challenge?" It's one of the top issues is always delegation. It's either time management, delegation, and now you know finding good people. So yeah. so yeah, but time management and delegation was always up there, and and everything that the Tao says is true. Right. I, 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 you know, the, the idea that I would never ask somebody to do something I wouldn't be willing to do, right. That mindset of leadership yeah. comes into play. Uh, it's easier to do it myself. I don't trust them to do it right. It's going to take longer for me to teach them than to just do it. Right. These are all the, he, he outlines perfectly the obstacles to delegation. Yep. And so, so yeah, when you start to think about, uh, you, you, you know, when I see a manager, and they're 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 printing stickers or they're they're doing some mundane task. I always tell them, I said, you realize that you're the highest paid sticker maker in America right now. Right. <laughs> and I know what I know what the the you know I know what you're getting paid. If you divide that by hours, you're making stickers. Yeah, I don't think anybody else in the country is getting paid that much to do the stickers. So right. right. So you know, and but they you run into just what Dow said that you know there's there's the obstacles to to handing that off, yeah, and the reality is everybody became a manager because somebody before them started giving them tasks to do, and they were able to increase their 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 abilities, and at some point we just made it official and we made you a manager. Um, but yeah, at some yeah. point, somebody started delegating to you stuff and you became more skilled. And at some point they saw that potential in you and gave you even more opportunity. I always think about St. Peter when we talk about this, mm -hmm. because after his big failure of denying Jesus three times after Jesus was arrested and he runs away um, like everybody else does, um, even after sort of, you know, he he hears that Jesus is back on the scene, he's resurrected, and, um, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's aware that it's happened. And you'd think he'd be all pumped and like, yeah, let's go, let's, you know, let's, let's start building the church. No, he goes fishing. And the reason he goes fishing is because that was his old job. That was comforting. Mm -hmm. you know, that was the thing he, you know, I can just do this. I'll just keep doing this. Here's a task. It's, it's something that's repetitive, and I'm just going to do this task and not have to think about all the work that I need to do over here on, you know, what do I do? Like, do I repent? Do I, you know, he, it was it was all the complicated stuff in his spirit. I'm just going to go retreat into this task. Mm -hmm. I'm going to escape. And, um, you know, in case you're not familiar with the story, Jesus actually meets him on the shore as he's fishing. And it has there's this incredibly touching scene where he restores Peter into the ministry work that he's going to do, and he and he gives up fishing and starts doing that fishing for men thing that Jesus mentioned at the beginning. But all of that to say, how often do we do that? We retreat into things that we feel safe and comfortable doing instead of going and doing the thing that's a little bit harder or takes a little bit more courage. You know, uh, we talked in our last episode about 
you know, live fire exercises and going and, and, you know, working directly with people, you know, once you're without a net managers do that too, right? It's not just about sales calls and cold calls. Mm -hmm. Um, Managers have to go do some hard conversations sometimes, or, or just conversations that take a lot of effort, right? It, It takes a lot of emotional labor as much as mental labor. And, and so, so escaping into that, um, it is, is not a, not a huge surprise. Right. Uh, but, but the question is, Hey, where do you bring most value for this organization? What's best for the overall picture of what we're trying to accomplish? What should you be doing? What should they be doing? Mm -hmm. Well, and as a, as an addendum, uh, to episode 212, do, 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 do. This just in <laughs> the uh, the manager, uh, you know, took one person and moved them out uh, of that particular management role, and they're now in a, a management role that maybe better suits their strengths. And then they went. It's very unusual for this organization. They went outside, hired a manager who innately loves to do what it is that the manager was asking the other managers to do. Aha. Uh-huh. So he's just he's just wired to go work with the people, go work with the customers, just yep. go get stuff done. Yep. And so uh, he has no interest in the administrative part of the the job. No, oh, that's funny. And so that's so yeah, he's like, okay, if I can't get them to to change, and I can't get them to move in in a different direction, then I got to bring somebody who's naturally that way. Yep. And, yeah. and, and, you know, just, just reconfigure the, the chemistry, the energy, the, the strengths of that team. So I'll, I'll tell you something funny, sort of along those lines. I have a CFO at one of the organizations I do workshops for, uh, one of my clients, and she refuses to allow me to pack up my stuff after I'm done with a workshop. And and she's so good at it. Like she's better at it than I am. She uh, she gets all the candy bowls and all the different food and all my different, you know, notepads and pens and stuff. And tra, 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 tra. she says, Mark, this is my therapy. Don't you dare touch this. She's really good at it. Now, nobody's going to pay her to be CFO to do that. Right. But it's it's kind of like the old expression. Even a bodybuilder wants a cheeseburger every now and then. Mm-hmm. You no, know, like this is this is a break for her, and then back at it the the stuff where she's really doing some value add. So I'm not saying that you know you you have to be you know com- it, it has to be completely antithetical to you on those d- administrative tasks. But again, where do you really bring value for the organization? That's that's where you know if that's what the role is about, that's what you need to be doing, and offload the stuff that doesn't fit you. You know that that doesn't fit your strengths. Mm-hmm. Right. Or make up your mind that maybe you're in the wrong spot. Yeah. Yeah. And go, and go okay, I'm not in there. This is not. This isn't for me. Yeah. This doesn't fit me. I've got to yeah. go do something else. And there's there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, that's the positive thing to do. Oh, my gosh. Uh, everybody wins. Yeah. Everybody so, wins when you do that. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see that right, it's playing out as we speak. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what happens down the road and. Uh, you know, is the team able to to perform at a higher level, giving yeah. you know, having brought different strengths into the organization? Well, uh, one last thing, and then a funny last thing. Uh, I, I'm seeing this as as sort of two buckets. The one bucket is you have to get a mindset along the lines of what we were just talking about. You have to have this mindset that says, "I bring value here." They bring value there. They actually even, you know, as to Dow's point, they get energy from it. And uh, I should let that delegated task go to them. I should absolutely delegate. And and you have to have a mindset that you can say, I'm going to let go of this and and pass it off because that's the right thing to do because of my strengths, their strengths, uh, our roles, et cetera. And the other half of that is then you have to go actually do the training so that that person is launched successfully doing the task. So, um, you know, whatever that looks like, it's, it's probably going to be something where you either pay now or pay later. Mm -hmm. You're either going to spend the time investing in that person, teaching them the process, showing them the tasks, providing the resources so that they can take it and run with it. Or you're going to be limping along thinking you've delegated, but you actually haven't because you keep having to step back into it 
And now you're just even more frustrated than you were before. So, mm -hmm. so that's the, the, the real last thing I wanted to say is I'm seeing it as two buckets and you better do both of them. You better do some work on both of them to do this uh, successfully. Yeah, I was always told there's a difference between abdication and delegation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Abdication, right. yeah, you hand it off, you walk away, never think of it again. Whether or not it goes well, who knows? Uh, delegation is a is a is a systematic process where you 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 train, you set expectations, you provide feedback. You, you, you know, it's it's an ongoing thing until the person's skilled enough to do it on their own. I love that. I love that. Um, so, so here's the funny last thing um, is, uh, <laughs> so you said, you know, Taoist philosophy, um, which, which I think is great. Uh, and uh, just for, for what it's worth, um, Tao, um, now that I, I get it, that Tao is more of a Chinese concept, but, uh, but guess what Tao does for a living? He's a sensei. So, I mean, it couldn't be more perfect. Dow, if you want to take that and run with it for your for your practice, I mean, man, what a, what an opportunity. Uh, so uh, that's that's all I have to say. I'm very thankful for Dow and Dale uh, for uh, listening and uh, uh, providing some great insights that we could share on our uh, on our podcast here. So thanks. Oh no, that's fantastic! Yeah, it's good to know that. Yeah, at some point we should expand our listening audience into like Edgar's and Eileen's or something. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to work our way through the alphabet. So uh, we're excited to have uh, have names to go with the our all our audience. Uh, that's perfect. So as you can tell, right, fifty percent of our audience has already written in and we've responded. <laughs> so. Uh, feel free to do the same. Uh, if you disagree, agree, want to know more, want to know less, uh, by all means, tell us, and uh, we'll definitely see if we can tackle it. Feel free to uh, put those comments in a five-star iTunes review. We, we read all of the, the comments that come through, and uh, we appreciate you very much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the five stars we actually print out. So, yeah, <laughs> make it happen. We will immortalize your words. <laughs> The, uh, speaking of immortal words, Ooh, so true. Let's let's throw it over to our announcer, the man, uh, Mr. Wolf. Take it away, Mr. Wolf. And that's it. Join us next time when you'll hear Mike say, "Well, I'm sure he'll say something pithy." Don't miss it. Next time, it doesn't take a genius. That's good enough.